I feel like in America, there's this thing about studying and get a degree. It is so important. And like people will judge you based on that. Where sometimes maybe in Europe, you know, not left. everybody's going to be a doctor. Not everybody's yeah. going to be, you know, I don't know, a, a lawyer. You know, you can be a hairdresser and people will respect you because, you know, you, if you're good at your job and you're successful, then, you know, there's no problem with it. It doesn't matter what what's your background in terms of studying. And it looks like in America, it is something very uh, important to get. It, and not only is it important, it's uh, it, it also puts people in debt for the rest of their lives. So they're basically... Yeah, and it's so expensive. Yeah, it's so... And, and it... it um, no, it's an interesting thing that you say. Like, and so, so, like, I remember being a kid living in Italy and there were sciopero. Uh, it's one of my favorite words. Sciopero means strike, right? So mm-hmm. you, would, okay. you would be living in Italy. I'm sure you can relate because you live in France and this probably happens all the time, right? So some, some days the bus system, the, the public transportation system stopped working. That was it. And they would announce it ahead of time because they mm-hmm. were fighting. They were fighting a labor fight and they were like, you yeah. guys aren't paying us enough. We're just not going to work. And we knew that ahead of time and yeah. we were able to accommodate for it. It wasn't the end of the fucking world. And these people yeah, well, that happened were... that happened pretty much everywhere. Yeah, you know, no, in not France here. and in Germany as well. Every year they yeah, stopped. not here. And then one ah, of the not other here. yeah, <laughs> not at all. People can't. It happened in Tunis as well, you know. <laughs> but but here, here okay, so check this out. Check this out, okay? So this is we're doing a cultural exchange. And and you kind of hinted that you think I'm a conspiracy theorist, but that's okay. (laughs) I'm like, is there a conspiracy? Welcome to What's My Thesis. I am your host, Javier Proenza. Every week, my guests and I share the answers we found to the questions we have. Join us as we explore and expand our worldview and ask, what's my thesis? And I just realized I forgot to ask you how to pronounce your name. How do you pronounce your name? Uh, Pilar. Pilar. And then... P-I-L-I-R. And then uh, last name? Ah, uh, Clergue. It's a French Claire? name. Yeah, okay. Claire. Man, the pronoun... I'm just actually going to leave this part in because <laughs> I'm not going to try to get that <laughs> French. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, I uh, am really excited to talk to you because you are in Tunisia. Well, I mean, right now you're not, but I, you're from Tunisia? No, I'm not from Tunisia. I'm from France, uh, okay. but I moved last year to Tunisia with my husband. Mm-hmm. And but my husband is from Germany, so I moved from Berlin to Tunis last November mm-hmm. for his job. So yeah, that's that's it basically. Is Tunis a city in Tunisia, or is that the way the proper way to pronounce it? Tunis is the capital, actually, okay, and then perfect. Tunisia is the country. So yeah. And for but, people that don't know, that's Tatooine, right? Where Star Wars was shot? I think so, yeah. That's a little yeah, bit yeah. in the desert. In South, South Tunisia. That's true, yeah. actually, yeah. When I lived in yeah, Italy, yeah. my brother went for a trip. And, and so so it was like a big deal. He went for a school trip. And, I, and like he came back and he was so worldly after that, you know? <laughs> did, did you enjoy it? Did you like it? I think so, yeah. I, it's, I mean, it's been a long time since I saw it. What, I, what sticks out mostly is like the little trinkets that he brought back that are like, you know, mementos of the trip, which is always uh-huh. cool, you know, because they're, they're, they're always these little objects that are like charged with like um, mystery, right? Because it's like a thing from a far off place that you've never been to and it hints at what that place is like, but it's not a representation of it. You get what I'm saying? I know, I know. It's the, yeah. Well, Tunis, you, you have a great representation of, of, you know, what it is, Tunisia, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it's, not, it's not very touristic, uh, so you are really in Tunis if you, if you live in Tunis, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like being in holiday, so you have a full experience of the, of the country. Oh, absolutely, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing with Italy. <laughs> yeah, did, did yeah. you live in Italy? Or was it... Yeah, I grew up in Rome. And my dad worked for oh, the nice. UN, so... Uh, that's, that's kind of how I'm, uh, uh, so, uh, upset at America all the time (laughs) because I grew up somewhere else and I'm like, you guys are fucking crazy, dude. (laughs) A a little bit. Well, crazy. I think American people, they can be crazy in, you know, in a positive way and in a negative way. Like, 
Yeah, I, I think yeah. We don't, and we definitely don't have to make that the topic of conversation. Sure. <laughs> I don't want all my American listeners to be like, "Who is this French woman?" <laughs> I have some critique to say about you know America. <laughs> my but topic I, I was them. why your country sucks. <laughs> no, it's but a complicated s- relationship people have with it. Go ahead, tell me about your relationship with America. If you if you feel if that's where you were going. No, you know, I I do love America. I think, you know, there's this this thing about America, you know. I think a lot of people in Europe actually, you know, would love to live and go in America. And sometimes I think people will say that they hate American and I think maybe they are a little bit jealous, you know. Because yeah. <laughs> there's all thing about movies and, you know, you have this, you know, of this this craziness and, you know, the thing about uh, becoming rich from one day to another, starting from nothing to, you know, to everything. So, you know, I think, I think, you know, like everywhere in the world is like good people and bad people. So, Oh, no, I'm not criticizing the people. I just think that we're a very heavily propagandized culture, you know, and like, and it's really hard to break out of that. So to have like actual... What do you mean in propaganda? Uh, 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 I think that like the, a lot of people think that we're number one in the world, but they don't realize that we're like number one at destroying other cultures <laughs> um, you know okay. and so 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 for me like I, I it's funny to talk to you because you're just like yeah no I mean these are like known things but like over here that's that's radical yeah you know? I guess I, I don't realize it's what, what, what you mean for me like I, I just I just have you know my my uh, the picture of America from cinemas and stuff like yeah, that so exactly I, exactly I, I think I only have the positive parts so far no but, I definitely mean, we've seen a lot of negative the last few years from America and I, you know, it looks like it was going crazy. Uh, Only the oh, last few yeah. years? <laughs> yeah, but the last past few years was quite last bad. Uh, so politically, it was really, really strange. You know, it was kind of scary. But in the other end, you know, a lot of people are looking at America, you know, from 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 the world, you know. A lot of people are, you know, just checking on you. And even Europe, we all, you know, look at America, what America is doing. We talk about it in the news. And I think that's yeah. pretty much everywhere. So it's... You know, yeah. it's important that you have like a, a sustainable government. <laughs> well, you know, I, we can debate a, about whether it's sustainable mm-hmm. the way it's going. <laughs> but anyway, oh. let's. Let, I want to know a little bit more about France. The the thing is that you're triggering me, and I I'm trying to change the subject. <laughs> Sorry, Not because sorry. you mean to, but because like I'm like, oh, let me tell you about why America is problematic. But I don't want to do that. That's not what the point. That's not the culture exchange I want. So you're coming from France. Uh, and uh, where in France did you grow up? I grew up in south of France, in Perpignan. Okay. That's in the Pyrenees. I don't know. Well, probably one of the biggest uh, city knows outside France, probably in uh, Near to my city is probably Marseille. I don't know if you know it. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to so, ask you, because when you said the uh, south of France. Uh, actually, my I, city is between Marseille and Barcelona. Well, yeah. I used to listen to, I forget what French group it was, but I couldn't understand them. But it was a rap group that did the uh, ah. Marseille, Sex and ah. Sun. Yeah. Who is that? <laughs> ah, no, that's probably, I don't know. You don't know, is okay. it, uh, what, You don't know NTM, maybe? No. You no, I forget. I forget who it was. <laughs> but there it, it, it was a period where I was like, oh, let me let me listen to European hip hop. But I didn't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but that I, that ended because like I couldn't understand it. So I was like, oh, OK, this is a dead end for me. <laughs> I know. But you do speak Italian, though. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So I, I grew up with Giovanotti. Do you know who that is? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> oh, he's an Italian guy. His hit, big hit when I was a kid was give me five. All right. <laughs> no, I don't know anything about Italy. I've never been to Italy, actually. Which yeah. is, you know, I, well, you really used to be a neighbor, and you were in the south, so like that was like right there. I know. I, I used to go when I was a kid. We used to go to Spain a lot because it's the last city before my uh, my uh, before Spain. So I hang out a lot in Spain, but not in yeah. Italy. Never. I don't know why. Well, I I want to go one day for sure. What was crazy about me when, for me, when I was in Barcelona is that like, you could literally walk along the beach to France. And I was like, oh, I never, I mean, I knew the geography, but I'd never knew that. Like, I never experienced that. Like, oh, France is like right there, you know? So, yeah. And like, what brought you to Tunisia? Because that is basically what I'm trying to get at. Ah, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's because of my husband, you know? Okay. Because he got a job. 
he's working in development cooperation. So he's working for uh, he's working in sustainable management of water resources. If that makes sense. Of what? Water resources. Water. Water. Okay. <laughs> I know English when I say water sometimes. No, 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 no. I just I, I it's the Zoom. It's more than anything. Okay, so we so he got he he went for 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 his job over there, and uh, you know it was you know during the pandemic time, so I had pretty much not nothing to do in Berlin, so I decided to go with him, and I was like, yeah, sure, let's go. And oh, so this is not a not a permanent residence thing. Are you back in, well, in Germany now permanently or, or this no, was just no, no. Uh, uh, no, no, no. We, well, it's supposed to be for a year. And um, so I moved last November. So it should be until next, until January. Uh, but now we, we, we just came here to get vaccinated mm. because, you know, because we have to. And just holiday, just to see the family. I haven't seen my family for quite a while because of COVID and uh, yeah, same side of uh, my friends. So I'm going to do some family holiday. I'm just here for family holiday. Yeah, and then I'm going back to to Tunisia, and I'm quite happy to be here because it's really really hot at the moment in Tunisia, so it's like 45 <laughs> degrees and so. It's <laughs> probably not nice cold in Frankfurt though. <laughs> well, it's 20 degrees. It's nice, you know. Yeah. It's, it's cozy, okay. and you know I have to do quarantine, so it's the perfect time. You know, it's perfect weather. It's not too sunny. You don't want to really want to go out. It's kind of raining, and so it's perfect perfect for quarantine time. Well, what can you tell us about Tunisia? I mean, I know you're not Tunisian, uh, I, but like, uh, you know, and I don't want to get you into political trouble, so I'm not going to ask you about local politics. <laughs> you know, well, like, a lot to say. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like culturally, like, uh, can you give us a sense of like what, you, like, what are the main, uh, uh, like, is it a mainly Muslim place or is it a mainly... It is a Muslim country, so they have, you know, which, you know, actually, you know, if you think about it, maybe for some people uh, thinking about going to a Muslim country and to live there, you know, they can kind of can be afraid. But actually don't see that much of difference. That's just, just fine. You know, it's just Muslim and it's not such a big deal over there, you know. Yeah, people yeah. are like you and me and they just have a different religion. And you just have the mosque, which is it's a different song when, you know, it they sing, and you know, in Europe we have the clocher. And <laughs> the clocher. So what's it's that? not. What's that? Wait, you know, I don't you have know. have like you know, in, you know, like in the Vatican, you have the um, how do you say the cloche, the cloche. <laughs> oh no, that, that's a so that's a French word that I don't know how to translate. But uh, okay. ring the bell, to ring the bell, ring the bell, you know, okay, ring okay, the okay. bell at the church, you know, and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so they have you know the. the the men with things. I don't know. Exactly <laughs> the men with things. things. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but, but that's anyway, great. So, sorry. No, a, I just, I love, I love, uh, I love those like translations that go from like, you know, because I speak Spanish too. And that, you know, like uh, the other day I had to look it up cause I was like, Hey, I've never looked it up, but like the word for cool, like if you're a cool person, it's Figo. Right. But that's uh -huh. also the word for fig, but apparently they're not related. <laughs> well, fig in French is also like Spain, Spanish fig, yeah, 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 yeah. One, but we say cool in France. Anyway, so <laughs> Tunis, what I was saying, yeah, so it's a Muslim country, um, you know, it's, I would say it's very nice, you have very nice weather, where there's a lot of issues, there are a lot of, a lot of things that can, could be better, I think, mm -hmm. um, because it's not so well developed at yeah. the moment. And uh, actually, it's pretty hard because they've been they, at the moment right now. They're having like a lot of problem with the COVID. Mm -hmm. um, last year, they, they didn't have any heat or anything. Like it wasn't that bad last year. They didn't have any case as much as we had in Europe. And now they have like a huge wave at the moment. Yes. So, you know, I didn't have a chance to really visit the country since uh, I'm there because we had quarantine time mm -hmm. a couple of times. So I'm hoping that when I will be back, I can visit a little bit more and I have a little bit more of the, the culture. Yeah, especially if you're vaccinated, that might help that. Yeah. Well, now they have the Delta over there. I don't know if you hear about it. It's like the We Indian... have that here in California, apparently, too. Ah, you have it, too? Yeah. The, a new variant, right? The Delta variant? Yeah. I just so read I don't know if you're protected if you have the... I don't know. They... <laughs> well, I think, what, I think basically what's supposed to happen now with the vaccine is that you're probably not likely to die. 
right? Like it, it reduced, but th- don't come to the show for COVID. This is literally, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> please YouTube. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up. I'm not, there's not a conspiracy theory. I suppose, oh, no. yeah, I, I no, assume no. that well, the, my understanding is that I got the vaccine and I'm not anti-vax YouTube. <laughs> no, I'm not. Did you, did you get yeah. vaccinated? Yeah, yeah. I've been vaccinated for, for a while now. It's been great. Oh. I don't, I work without a mask uh, uh, oh, and, nice. and interact with customers all the time. So it's pretty, oh, it's pretty perfect. sweet. Yeah. That's nice. That's, that's the thing in America is going well, right? You, you guys are. It's going, I mean, living yeah. The dream like, again. <laughs> <laughs> you can go like for, for a lot of people it's going well, but for a lot of people it's probably, there's still a lot of things that like are, are economic problems that are lasting. Like for example, over here in California, uh, I heard Newsom announced that all of the rent is going to be paid off, which is like a okay. uniquely American problem. I don't in in Frankfurt did, did like or in Germany did did people have issues like paying their rent because of uh, you, well, you know, like, yeah or was, well, or, not... or did they get government assistance? They did. They, they, they assistance. Most, yeah, most so we're just people. getting it now, right? You're just so getting like, it now. Yeah, but That's that means horrible. that people that people got uh, and, and just government Invest- assistance on rent and only in California. So, okay. yeah, tell your European friends that they should watch different movies. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Well, the thing is, yeah, I, I, I saw it, and as well, if you're living in Tunisia, you know, they can't afford it to close everything and to just just stop everything because yeah. they can't, you know, like like they did in Europe, just pay people and say to people, oh, just stay home and, you know, we'll yeah. write a check, you know, <laughs> which, is, which is great, you know, even if it was, you know, I thought, I, th- I saw it as something very positive at the end, like, as being in Europe, and, like, we should, like, really appreciate that, that, that is very lucky, actually, we don't, sometimes you don't realize it, but, you know, yeah. you could be somewhere in the other part of the world where, you know, if you get sick, you just get nothing. Yeah, nothing like over here. <laughs> like you guys get a lot of people. Are, in America? Uh, okay, so one of the, I don't know if you're familiar with the election with uh, Joe Biden that just happened. I, I, I mean, I, I'm assuming that it's reported around, but basic, but like the fine details of it are that he campaigned saying that he was going to give people two thousand dollars. He was like, uh, as soon as the as soon as we were in office, the two thousand dollar checks are going out. And then immediately he goes, it's $1,400 because you already had $600 from before. Oh, so you're not going to get the full payment. So we've gotten, but this is not recurring payments. This is one-time payments. We've gotten $1,200. We got $1,200 one time under Trump. We got $600 under Trump. And then we got $1,400 under Biden. So we actually got more money under Trump. <laughs> it's insane. And then, yeah. so a lot of people are going to start getting kicked out of their houses. So that's why California did this. They, they, they set up uh, the, they, they, they basically were paying people's back rent. But at the same time, a lot of people lost their jobs. So now <laughs> the problem isn't solved because mm. they, they still have to uh, pay this month's rent. Right? Like, so... The one thing that it does help is that it stops like predatory uh, real estate companies from like BlackRock and and whatnot from coming in and buying people's houses. So basically, one of the things that's happening over here is that um, there's this big push by companies like BlackRock to to like offer above market rate prices. So like Mm -hmm. the house is worth something. They'll offer you like, you know. A uh, hundred thousand more, three three hundred thousand more, so that okay. like they just buy people out, and the whole thing, it, like basically, make the attempt is to make m- a lot more of Americans renters, right? Okay. Because yeah. because yeah. our culture is designed around you property guys buy a lot, ownership. That's true. Yeah, that's that's but the thing in Germany. Like a lot of people that don't buy houses, that usually they rent it. There's a lot of renter. There's no. Yeah, not but a, over just over here, buy a house because, or something. Yeah, over here it's it's different though because a lot of those buildings are old, right? Like, I mean, you get what I'm saying. Like, whereas over here they just tear shit down. And they're like, uh-huh. like literally, oh, there okay. was there was just a big victory in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Like, I want people to understand that like there's there's like serious third world level poverty in this country because because of the way that the government like. Uh, runs things so like if you have an audience of Europeans I definitely want you know I was like I didn't want to talk about this stuff at first because Mm -hmm. because I was like well all my listeners probably know this stuff but if I get access to a European audience like seriously there is a project here that they're trying to develop you know what a super fun site is it it may be just an American thing there are places where 
the uh, land is so dirty and polluted that mm-hmm. um, that they decide that it's not worth fixing them and not trying to oh, clean okay. it up. So they just mm-hmm. shut it down. So there's one, there used to be a dry cleaners here in this neighborhood and they're trying to build these, these luxury condos to basically price everybody else in the neighborhood out by having these really fancy condos. Right. Mm-hmm. And then it's supposed to be mixed living, but there's like uh, the, the affordable housing is like, for people that make $34,000 a year. That's not like, you know, it's <laughs> that's not, not the poverty line. California is very expensive as well. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, insane. it's, just, it's crazy, right? So, yeah. So they, so they just basically finally got proper testing and they proved that these people are trying to build on a Superfund site. And they're trying mm-hmm. to basically poison people by making them move there. No, mm. not knowing and the whole reason is because it's close to the, the metro line and so they want to make like but it's like it's it's insane like the way like money like it's like uh it's crypto uh, it's or sorry it's anarcho-capitalism it's like anarchy with capital with a capitalist system right as opposed mm-hmm. to like the more leftist leaning uh anarchism right yeah. but yeah. it's crazy but anyway, now that we've done that segment for your, the European listeners, what is your topic? Because we're here to talk about you and get to know you a little bit better. <laughs> so, well, I decided to talk about, actually, it's a very simple subject, but it can be very interesting as well. So my subject is inspiration. Okay. And where do you so, get... Because, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Wait. No, I was where? just going to ask, what, what, where do you get inspiration? Because I was going to describe a little bit of what the kind of stuff you do. You do a lot of drawing with collage mixed in and stuff like that, right? Like, um, what do you describe yourself? Like, what is your, when people ask you, what kind of artists are you that don't do art? How do you describe yourself? Well, I say I do, uh, usually I do collage uh, mixed with illustration. That's the, you know, the, the easiest way to 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 describe it for me. I mm-hmm. found it because, you know, it's a little bit, yeah, it's a mix, mix, mix collage and uh, drawings, basically hand drawings. Mm-hmm. But this is actually, you know, I had a hard time coming up with a subject and for your podcast. And naturally I started wondering about inspiration because mm-hmm. I don't think about inspiration that much, you know. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, I have a very simple process in art making, like I sit down, I draw and I let it flow. And, and then I only stop when my art is finished or when I'm too tired. And I don't think about my work that much when I'm drawing. I like to listen to a podcast, so, or to music. So it makes me feel like my consciousness is not even connected to the drawing process, if you know what I mean. And, okay, so um, it's like, I'm uh, like, go ahead. So I'm a bit like, I'm almost like, uh, you know, I'm like a, a machine that you switch on in front of a white piece of paper and it works. And sometimes it stops because there is a problem that needs to be solved, such as, oh, what colors needs to be added here or what patterns to do next or what shapes do I want now to do? And once my consciousness has analyzed the problem and solved it, the machine can go back to work. <laughs> so here's where it is, where it gets interesting for me because I never really have my, I really ask myself this question, where do I get my inspiration? And, um, you know, I realized that if it's only when you are not inspired that you will think about inspiration. Mm-hmm. And so the question is, what is inspiration? Where is that coming from? Do you think that maybe inspiration might be, I'm not saying that this is what you're saying, but I'm asking that it might be more of like a myth kind of thing in terms of like, I've definitely had, because it's interesting the way you're saying, because you're saying the same thing that a teacher of mine once said, really? but you, but the in a similar way, but it, but so what they were saying, you're saying that you're the machine and you put, you, you, you turn it on. I would say that maybe you're the machine, but you, and you're always on. It's but you only execute when there's a piece of paper in front of you, right? That's interesting. Is, yeah. Is yeah. that? Do you get what I'm saying? Do you, do you the, the nuance there? Do you want to talk yeah, about yeah, that? Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm the I'm the machine. But you know, I need to. You know, my brain needs to get some maybe some some images or stuff like this that I absorb, and then once I, and that's the fuel. And once I'm in the front of the piece of paper. You know, it starts walking. <laughs> I love this. This is very like uh, early 1920s art discussion about like machines and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what, what is your inspiration, for example? You, 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 well, you're I, an artist. Or yeah, I, I'm an artist. I, I actually have a pretty weird process that, um, 
you know, has been uh, like, has been in a large part incorporating the process of talking to artists, right? Because I, you know, so that I would definitely say, I think that what I think is interesting about what you're saying. So like what the thing that my teacher said was that uh, it's not a faucet. You can't turn it on or off. Right. And so for me, I don't necessarily have like right now at the moment in at different periods, I've had a process of practice that, that, uh, that I follow, but I, t- I, ki- I tend to disrupt it a lot too, right? Because I don't always work in like in the same medium. I don't always work in painting. And so a lot of it involves a lot of thinking. Uh, w- at, at, when I'm at my best is when I'm doing a lot of writing or just journaling, you know, because mm-hmm. that gets me more present instead of like sucked into like my thoughts. So I, I think there is something to like clearing your head there that that mm-hmm. helps you with inspiration but um but yeah i do I, I i do kind of feel like also like you know like i wish i made more work but in reality when i execute the ideas that i have it's not like i haven't been working on stuff right it's that bullshit thing of like uh if you're writing a paper but you don't have a deadline you, you never put it down <laughs> you know <laughs> So, but the question is more like, where, where do you think you get your inspiration? So how do you get inspiration? Where, well, how, you know, where is that coming from? What like, do I draw I, from? From? What do I draw? Like, what, what do I, like, what makes me make work? Is that more yeah. the question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I am very much, which is funny that you said that. I'm very much interested in sort of the Dadaist, like, this is all fucking ridiculous kind of mindset, right? Okay. So that I think is really because I do talk about things that are essentially somewhat um, universal, but they're also very much about like being like the world that we live in as it exists. I find that I what I get a lot from looking at art history is the realization that there was an emotional impact that all this dry history that we read about, like that's not art history. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, I've said this before, even if it's the whitest guys (laughs) and even if it's, you know, like even with, despite all the problematic issues with art history and, Mm -hmm. and the fact that it's mostly made up bullshit anyway. Right. Um, there is still something that can be drawn from looking at Cezanne and, and, and being like, okay, this guy was like trying to figure out things about perception. Right. Yeah. And, and so, so the, and that was, and if you read a lot of the stuff that people were talking about, it was in the zeitgeist. Uh, yeah. So, so, so I, I think that, I think in terms of that, I, I, so that's, I guess that's my, my inspiration comes from my perception of how art is uh, it, like its purpose, what the purpose mm-hmm. it serves especially if it like gets elevated to being, you know, but, and then the reaction is one of the, that I'm looking for is one of intimate understanding of, of a a common shared experience. That's true. And I think, you know, I think to get inspired, inspired and get new idea, that's, that's a lot to do with the brain. And, you know, it's, I think you need to have the ability to look at the past and to have memories but also the ability to imagine the future if you want to be creative. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because if you, you know, you need to remember things uh, in order to have new idea, I think, yeah. as well. Yeah, and you need to, you can't live in a box and not interact with the world and still be inspired. You don't necessarily have to interact with people, but it, it like art comes from experience, right? For sure. That's, that's why <laughs> our work gets better as we get older, hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. I'm still very young, so. <laughs> Did you know that the the word inspiration comes from the Latin word inspirare? Did you know? I mean, I'm familiar with inspirare as an Italian word too. Yeah, but, it's in- uh, I, I yeah, I never actually thought about it. You, you know, you talk about you know the, our, um, the past artists, you know, and it means uh, to breathe into. So it's interesting because at the time, like in the past. Uh, the concept was the uh, kind of God gave it to you, the inspiration. It was something that was given to you. 
um, for instance, the Holy Spirit in Christianity. That is, you know, that is this Holy is giving to you so you can create something. Or God has given to you inspiration so you can create something. And I think nowadays this concept has changed completely, actually, because people are mostly inspired by their own active doing. For instance, listening to music or going to the cinema or yeah. going to nature. So or going to the museum. So yeah, maybe it is not somebody who breathing to you nowadays, but rather yourself breathing, I feel like, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so say that again. Like, I think, you know, because, you know, there's the thing with the breathing, like some somebody was giving to you something, like you just breathe it. And I think maybe nowadays it's more something that you breathe into you, like you, you take you it. You breathe yourself, you inhale, yeah. as opposed to it being... Uh, Inhale, in, in, yeah. yeah okay <laughs> yeah yeah that's interesting well i mean now that we're going to uh um respiration as a metaphor it also is like still tied into that machine thinking right because like the engine is just the uh the, uh, the you know the engine is just a, a re respiration anyway, right? That's why you have exhaust. It's like, it's an air pump. <laughs> uh, what well, the brain, I see the brain is kind of a machine as well, if you think about it. Yeah. Tell me more it's about interesting. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me more like, about that. Just how the brain functions, you know, it's very, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of machinery as well. You know, it has yeah. some, you know, you have a, a right brain, like you have the brain is in, it's in two parts. You have the right part of the brain and the left part of the brain. And the right part is more about feelings and imagination and intuitions and rhythm and creativity, where the left part is more about sequencing, lining, thinking, mathematic, logic, facts. And, you know, it all works together. And, and, you know, and the one side can work with the other side, you know. Yeah. And this is why, you know, I probably like to listen to something when I when I draw as well, because, I, you know, I, I like to listen to a podcast or something. What are your and favorite podcasts? Say, hmm? <laughs> what are your favorite podcasts? Since we're talking inspiration. Well, my favorite podcast that I really like is the author podcast from the, the BBC. Author? Okay. And you, what, is, you, what kind of stuff they talk about? Well, that's the thing that's probably inspiring because they always talk about, um, uh, they always do the Outlook BBC, the Outlook podcast BBC, always do interview with incredible people, like people who had a crazy story to tell, you know? So it's a lot of narratives. Are they, are they people that have suffered? Are they people that have, like, uh, like what kind mm. of experiences are we, are we discussing? It, it because be, that is interesting. It can be any, any, any kind of experience. That's so thing. it's not just it can, like sadness bait. Like mm, there's a lot of sadness. Sometimes there's sadness, but with a positive and um, you know, uh -huh. it's a lot about people who had, you know, a lot of things um happening in their life and how they went through and how they achieve and you know, it's it's always there's always a bit of positive yeah. um at the end of it. So it can be about I don't know, um last time I've listened to one to uh, the first black ballet dancer in America, for example. Oh, and wow. she was telling okay, stories. <laughs> Yeah, it's really, it's about, you know, incredible, uh, they say the incredible stories of people that they have, you know. And yeah. I think I like to listen to that when I draw, actually. Yeah. And, you know, you will think that when I draw, I probably use my uh, right brain to draw because it's about, you know, art and, and feelings. But then I realized that it's probably not, you know. Because when I draw, I draw a lot of, you know, uh, shape, uh, a lot of lines, and it's almost like um, geometric. There's a lot of geometric form. It's always circles and stuff like that. So I think since my, um, I think by listening to interesting story, I think it is my right brain that stays active with feelings and imaginations. And then yeah. my left brain, left part of the brain, which is more mathematics and stuff like this, it's probably functioning for the drawing, you know, at the same time. And I think it's funny, you know. <laughs> well, what part of the brain, I mean, not that you, I expect you to know this because you're not a brain expert, but what part of the brain would be the motor skills section? I, I, that, I pose that as an open-ended well, question. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I don't the thing, necessarily I would, think. That, I would say that's the right part, you know. Yeah, but oh, so even, even. It, it, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Well, one of the things that I've been thinking about as we've been talking about all this brain stuff is that. Um, cause I, I'm also familiar with the concept that you were bringing up. Uh, I think where I heard from it, heard it from was from the woman that d wrote Eat, Pray, Love, 
who did mm-hmm. a TED talk about it, and she was saying that um, that that the main premise is the premise of genius, right? Like where where it, uh, the the genius was not the actual artist; the genius was the inspiration. Whereas mm-hmm. now we are. Um, we are the source of the genius, right? Like someone is the genius, um, which is interesting because it might have something to do with how much more we know about brains, but also, that's true. Yeah. Also, I think it may be tied into the concept of privacy, right? Cause privacy mm-hmm. is, is like a pretty m- new concept where you actually have isolation. Like it's, um, hasn't been around that long that like, you know, prima nocta <laughs> and things like that, which people who don't know, it's like the king can have sex with your wife before you do <laughs> on your wedding night. Yeah, that's true. Before it was very, very, very open, you know? Yeah, like, it was like you had no privacy rights. I mean, we're getting back there pretty quickly. But that's uh, <laughs> but but the, but but I'm saying like, I think that that might be something, you know, because that's one of the things, the, the things that I think a lot of people who, who think like me are, is that there's, uh, uh, in the U S is that it is, the problem is this intense individualism, right? Where That's it's true. like, where, where it's like, you can't encroach on Jeff Bezos's rights, even though he's encroaching on everybody's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so we celebrate him and like, and same thing with Bill Gates. It's like been going on for a very long time. So it's interesting. The idea like, it's, and those are people we consider geniuses. So there, Mm -hmm. I I, I tied it nicely. You take over. (laughs) No, but it's interesting what you said about individualism. I think so. Maybe, you know, um, we all want to be, and maybe there is a a lot of the case in America where you want to be uh, a special person. You want to be different. We all want to have our own style and our own genius, and we all want to be genius. But maybe we're not all genius, and maybe we're just all simple. And unfortunately, you know, sometimes it's not that bad because you know, <laughs> you don't have to put too much expectation as well on. I was just gonna say, genius. yeah, it's a lot of pressure to be a genius, <laughs> right? It's a lot of work. You know, you have to. You know, I think you have to be. Uh, you know, you have to to do a lot of things to in rather to be a genius. You know, it's, yeah, it's a lot of work actually. So, well, if you're a genius and you make something and it's not genius then you can't release it, right? Like, it's just like, it I, I it, it could Maybe be crippling. Maybe you're not a genius then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's my point. And then you have all this doubt. But my last I know, piece... But I think somebody who's a genius doesn't need to ask himself a question. I think that person doesn't know he's a genius. Yeah. It's just not even asking himself a question. He just do things and people are amazed about it. So... You know, um, yeah, if you ask yourself if you're a genius or not, maybe you're just not. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, I think that it, the the way that the, the, the TED Talk with this woman uh, went, I forget, I don't know her name. I never read the book. But the whole premise was that she had written this book that exploded, E Pray Love, right? Like, I know. It, I saw the movie. I didn't, to be honest, I didn't like the movie. <laughs> I, 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 it doesn't sound like it's it's great. You know, but I, mean, I people res- liked it, but I, yeah, I don't know. Right, it doesn't sound like it's for me. How about that? I, I that, that that that's less judgmental, but um, but like, I, you know, and and I I don't begrudge her her creativity. I'm not like at all bashing, uh, you know, her. I I think that she is a person who engages in creative process, and she has some valid thoughts on it, regardless of what I think about the art. So what she was basically saying was that um, that like there's this pressure to to hit it again. And that like that. And so she talked about the whole process of that, because like we're like exact going back to inspiration, like, you know, it was it, 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 it there were probably a whole bunch of circumstances that made that book perfect for that moment. Right. And maybe it doesn't even hold up in the long term. Right. Maybe she writes something better and it's not mm-hmm. as popular. And how do you deal with that? Like. You know, it's really hard. Oh, for writer, yeah, that must be really, really hard to, to write a really first book, and then you know you have the pressure. You always have the pressure, but we always—it's kind of the society who puts pressure as well on us. Like, yeah. you should be always uh, doing something and you know doing amazing things, and you should speak. And also with the social media as well, it's a lot of you know a lot of this thing, you know, happy life and everything. And I think that's a very American uh, American thing about it as well, is, you know, you guys like to be, like, you feel like you have to be happy all the time, you know. <laughs> that may be the most <laughs> first thing that's ever been said. Happiness, it feels in America, like, you, you, you're supposed to be happy all the time. 
<laughs> Thank, I'm so glad you said that. That's hilarious. That is very true. That like uh, I definitely think that I th- what I was gonna the way I was gonna say it is that we're all mini Hollywoods and you know pr- pr- like doing our own PR, making our own story of how great we are, uh, myself included. But that's oh, funny that you said. We all do it in a little bit, you know. We all do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, in certain level, in certain yeah. level. But it's funny to hear that because you actually, you have like 25,000 followers. You are like mm-hmm. on Instagram, you're like a big heavy hitter. Do you, do you does that translate to commercial success? Are you selling work? Uh, yeah, that, that actually regular? what I have to, Instagram helped me a lot with, with a lot of different projects. And I did, I did, I, I don't make a million out of it, but no, I no, do no, yeah. a lot of time. It brings me a little project and I'm very yeah. happy with it. And most of the time is from Instagram. Do you, do you ever do you ever sell some of those drawings that you that I see you make? I mean, you, yeah, you, you're I sell it on prolific. my website sometimes. Not like crazy, but it's also because I don't do prints. I only sell original artwork. Yeah. And but because I'm in Tunis, I don't really have time to put into it. Um, mm. You know, I could do more stuff on my website, like yeah. um, maybe cheaper and everything. But I'll do it in the future. I'm I'm not putting pressure on myself. <laughs> no, no, fine. no, no. I'm I'm just fascinated by the whole process. You know, because. Uh, uh, as someone, just the questioning comes from the line of as someone who's trying to get the show to grow bigger on the podcast, like it's intri- it, I I want to also have realistic expectations with what like more followers will get me. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, well, you know, the thing is, that you you I, I think you you do you know I get opportunity. You know, I got I got pencils for free as well. I got stuff yeah. who gave me pencil. I got people who's asking me to do stuff for them uh like you get commissions logo or but not like crazy every day every day i have got opportunities just like i feel like it's like just normal <laughs> but you feel like you but it get, i get the sense that from what you've said that you feel like you're in a position where if you really wanted to go for it without putting pressure on yourself and and making your life miserable you could you have enough a big enough audience you know uh, that that you you feel like you would be supported by that audience, right? Like, which I think is interesting because that's pretty much what everybody's trying to do right now, which is that American happiness thing. So you're a good person to talk about that because you seem, to, <laughs> as someone who's not so focused on being happy all the time, uh, mm-hmm. you seem you seem pretty happy, and <laughs> and you and 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 uh, I mean, there's not a lot of like, um, I don't know that that French like. Life is mad. <laughs> oh, I do wake up in a bad mood, really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do, I do often. You know, I do. I'm, I'm sometimes I'm not happy. You know, but I think everybody. You know, yeah. I, I don't understand how can you not? Uh, you can't be happy if you're not happy. Sometimes you have to be not happy to be able to enjoy happiness. I think, and I think so, you know, that- wake up in a bad mood. You should embrace it and be in a bad mood all day. <laughs> You should embrace it or you shouldn't? You should. You should. You should, you should, you should. just be in a yeah, bad mood. Well, what can you do? You're in a bad mood, you're in a bad mood. You know, just enjoy yeah. it. But en- not enjoy, I mean, you know. <laughs> no, I get what you're saying. I'm saying. Enjoy, enjoy. being in a bad mood. Like, you should, like, sometimes like, people in, you know, they're like, oh, if you're in a bad mood, just try to meditate, take a deep breath, try to be positive. But I just, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work. You know, you're just in a bad mood. <laughs> Yeah, I, that's that's interesting. Uh, so you guys in France don't have a positivity movement like we do over here. Do you have? Oh, that? I think we have it, but not as much as in America. Yeah. What not is as it? Much as what, what do you guys are? are we like, like to complain a lot in France. Really? What do they complain about? No. <laughs> <laughs> everything. Everything. Like, but like what? Like small things? Like the train small is not thing. on time. It can go. It's you know. It can go from small things like weather is bad for three days. It's terrible. I'm depressed. You know, it's yeah. raining. I can't take it anymore. And uh, from politic, you know, everything, <laughs> which oh, is that, bad as well. <laughs> that's a good, uh, good thing you bring up because I actually, you know, going. Let, let me tie it into inspiration. I do get a lot of inspiration from um, from things of like people uh, joining together, and you don't have to necessarily talk about the yellow vest, but you're French. And you're notoriously a much more left-leaning society, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I respect a lot. Uh, I you you ha- would have n- you have no idea how often I've had friends over here be like, yeah, but like you know the French don't don't ju- just don't want to work, and I'm like, 
what? Fuck off. <laughs> they just well, don't want to be miserable. But I was like, I wasn't a big fan of the yellow cheese. Yellow vest. Yeah. No. Well, okay. well, you know, I live in Germany, so it's like, uh, I think, yeah, you know, what Germany is quite, you know, if compared to America, it's quite, it's kind of in the left side as well, I would say. Yeah. But uh, there's this, uh, I, this. Of recent, of late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, but I still a lot of things that are, that are great in Germany that works very well, you know, and but it's just people are a little bit more disciplinated, I would say, than the French people, definitely. <laughs> and yeah. I hope I'm not gonna get any French people, ah, but that's true, you know. And you know, I can be very critical as well with my uh, with with my country, and that's that's the thing as well that we do, French people, when we are not in France and we live outside France, we critical, we like to criticize our country as well. <laughs> so, what are you, what are some criticisms of France? Let's throw the let's light a fire, man. Let's get some controversy. Yeah, I'm gonna get into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. You don't have to go into it. No, well, well, oh, I, well, I, if I have to say about France, no, I do love, you know, I love France and I love French people, you know, and I have a lot of friends, uh, French friends, but, you know, sometimes, yeah, you know, I, but I, you know, just going to, you know, I lived in England as well and I lived in Germany now, I lived in Tunis, just, you know, sometimes I feel like, yeah, we maybe we, we just complain a little bit too much in France about mm. um, the system. And, uh, you know, that we don't have enough money, you know, we don't, we don't get enough money when we are not working or like the gilet jaune. And sometimes you just have to embrace a little bit more what you have, you know, enjoy what you have already, rather than complain about what you don't have, you know. So and what, especially what, since, what especially since I'm in, hmm? sorry, sorry. I, I didn't want to interrupt you. What you I, I, I'll ask you about the yellow, what your concerns it, with the yellow vest are and, afterwards. Finish you know, what you were saying. I, there's probably something that I learned actually going to, to Tunis. I think there's something that really when I, you know, I've, I've learned over there is that I didn't realize how much we have in Europe, how much is giving to us. Like just having, you know, everything, everything is nice. Everything is almost giving to us. We have so much food. We have so much material. We have everything we want. Yeah. And so, yeah, sometimes that's what I want to say. It's like sometimes you need to appreciate this, where you live and what you have. Yeah. I see. <laughs> and so what were you what what are your thoughts on the yellow vest so you think that they're asking for too much or i i, I, I don't know you know I, we don't have to do it uh, we don't have to talk what, about it if what you're, if you're not... about the yellow uh vest is uh they were well you know at the end it was bad you know it was getting bad and it was going you know people there were a lot of right people from the right side like they were i think it, it, it's just it's just get a little bit too too crazy you know too people crazy. I so only know from an, as an outsider, so and, you know, I wanted was, to get your take. No, no, it's fine. I can talk about it, you know. And, um, yeah, I didn't really follow it because I was in Germany at the time. Uh -huh. But, it, yeah, it felt like they just overreacted a little bit. And they, what pissed me off is that they break everything, you know. They break everything in Paris. They break all the shops and everything. And I thought that was mean because, you know, people are walking, actually, you know, yeah. in those shops. And they're doing that. They're doing... They they doing this on Saturdays and stuff like it was the busiest days for shop and restaurants and they just break everything and there's a lot of people walking honors and who wants to pay me who just want to do their job and serve your coffee and you know yeah and just have you know their life the normal life and like it was like every Saturday they were going to Paris and they were breaking everything in the touristic part of Paris and I thought that was bad you know you can manifest but you have to break everything you know. It's too yeah. much. And they were stealing stuff as well. And I thought it was too much. Really. There's yeah, I get that. I, I, I get that. And and um there is definitely an argument like that. That there but and I'm not like so there's there's a definitely a tradition of like labor rights out there that is really intense, right? And you know, like, for example, in Italy during the fascist period, like the anti-fascists were the mafia, right? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it, it was a it was a coalition of a lot of people that didn't like the fascists. But in that coalition were the mafia. So I totally understand that uh, there's but I, I also think that there's also the argument of like property is property and and when you're fighting an economic war like when mm -hmm. when you're protesting at the, at an economic situation i do think that there's some validity to 
uh, to destruction of property. I also think that a lot of times, like out here during the Black Lives Matter protests, there's a lot mm-hmm. of people that are not acting in good faith and are mm-hmm. engaging because they're yeah. taking advantage of the chaos. So, so we'll, I, I can, I'm happy to leave it at that because I think that, like, you know, I think it's important to like kind of cover all sides of this thing, not in a in a uh, cable news sort of sense, but I do think that like these things become very complicated when you when you get into the details of them. But uh, one of the things that I love a, 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 about Italian culture is that you can be a waiter and it's a good job, right? Like, <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah, that's true. And I think, but I think that's, go ahead. Well, no, and is, I think, is it bad, is it bad in, in America to be a, a waiter? Where you you get just money? don't make a lot of money. It's just, and, and like, you have the tips, no? Yeah, but it's not. I mean, you, it's like, it's a problematic thing where like your boss isn't paying you, your customers mm-hmm. are right, and and and, and you so have, you always have to be nice with the customer. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Nice you have no nice leverage at all in in your work environment. You're you're mm-hmm. you're at the behest of people. So yeah. I mean, I think I think that there's like, I think we're both two people like I'm in America and I have my problems with America and I, I fetishize your country and probably a little bit of that goes the other way. You know? It's the same for me. Yeah. That's yeah, true. Yeah. So, so, so but I like, think that like, I think in terms of this, I think in terms of this, this is like more of like, uh, uh, okay, that's interesting. I don't know who's right <laughs> kind of thing. You know? you know, I think, I think, I think that's a good thing that you say, you know, being a waiter is not a bad job in Italy. And, you know, I, it's something that I find quite nice as well in Germany. It's so actually they, um, they help you. You don't have to go to university and to get a degree. And, you know, uh, I feel like in America, there's this thing about studying and get a degree. It is so important. And like people will judge you based on that. Where sometimes maybe in Europe, you know, not left. everybody's going to be a doctor. Not everybody's yeah. going to be, you know, I don't know, a, a lawyer. You know, you can be a hairdresser and people will respect you because, you know, you, if you're good at your job and you're successful, then, you know, there's no problem with it. It doesn't matter what, what's your background in terms of studying. And it looks like in America, it is something very uh, important to get. It, and not only is it important, it's, uh, it, it also puts people in debt for the rest of their lives. So they're basically... Yeah, and it's so expensive. Yeah, it's so and and it, it um no, it's an interesting thing that you say. Like and so so like I remember being a kid living in Italy and there were uh sciopero. It's one of my favorite words. Sciopero means strike, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you would okay. you would be living in Italy. I'm sure you can relate because you live in France and this probably happens all the time, right? So some some days the bus system, the the public transportation system stopped working. That was it. And they would announce it ahead of time because they were mm-hmm. fighting. They were fighting a labor fight, and they were like, "You yeah. guys aren't paying us enough. We're just not going to work." And we knew that ahead of time, and yeah. we were able to accommodate for it. It wasn't the end of the fucking world. And these people. Yeah, well, got that better. happened. That happened pretty much everywhere. Yeah, you know, no, in not France here. and in Germany as well. Every year they. Yeah, stopped. not here. And then one <laughs> ah, of the other. Here. Yeah, <laughs> not at all. People can't. It happened in Tunis as well, you know. <laughs> But but here, here okay. So check this out. Check this out. Okay. So this is we're doing a cultural exchange. Right now, Joe Biden made it, encouraged, the private prisons. Oh my God! Do I have like a gray gray hair? <laughs> um, the, the so they the, basically over here. There's a loophole where prisoners can be treated as slaves. They can be forced to work. Right okay. for no money, so now in the prison, like, or, yeah, in in the the prison, prison. yeah, in the prison. That's work. like it's yeah. I think it's like there's an amendment that happened, and it 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 made slavery illegal, but it made it legal if you imprison people. So if you look at like you, you know European audience, welcome to America. I'm going to tell you a really di- disturbing truth. So, um, the reason that it's okay to shoot black people in the streets in this country and it never gets solved is because what they are doing is they are collecting property for the establishment, right? Mm-hmm. So if you kill somebody who is, amount, is the, in the process of being arrested is only being rounded up to become property of the state that corporations can exploit, Victoria's Secret, all these different companies, they get their shit made over there for cheap labor. They don't need, it used to be a scandal that people had sweatshops in other countries. Now, 
On top of all of that, Joe Biden is saying to is signaling to uh, to to uh, ICE and to or actually to the um, it's like it's a policy thing that came out recently. I forget mm-hmm. exactly the details, but basically for a dollar a day, people mm-hmm. that are immigrants that come here and get arrested. You've seen the children in cages and all of that stuff. That wasn't a Trump thing. That was a, a, a Joe Biden thing, a Joe Biden or Barack Obama thing. It just became a problem. It just, people just cared when it was Trump because Trump is an asshole and everybody loved to pin that on him, right? So, so we have an economic system that benefits from people mm-hmm. being poor and having to commit crimes to feed themselves and stuff like that. So it, 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 it's, it's a really, it, like, I'm telling you, it is anarcho-capitalism. It is, it is anarchism and capitalism in, in a capitalist system. And that's what they're going for. That, like, that's why they want people in, in, in really bad situations. So, but what makes, what the whole irony of all of this is that in Germany, like, the reason the Germans have health insurance the reason the Germans get all of these things is because we fucking gave it to them. We rebuilt their country with leftist mm-hmm. policies and we won't even give it to ourselves. And these are the people who butchered the Jews, right? Like this was the losing country. We didn't give mm-hmm. is them you know, we didn't give that land to the Jews. We went all to Palestine and we're like, fuck you, we're gonna make a bigger mess. Like, we're not good. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> going back to inspiration, because I do get a lot of inspiration from all these like uh, these things like it's, it, you know, it may not necessarily show up directly in my work because mm-hmm. I'm not going to like hit people with that. Right. Like that's okay. what the podcast is for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But like but but you but like um, but all this stuff is like it's like we live essentially the my my inspiration is that we live in a sci-fi dystopia and i want to make artwork that you're like oh yeah we do <laughs> but what what how, what are you going to do to make it better how do you going to see it like since i don't feel like i have the make power. it positive how are you going to make it you know i, I make it positive you... by talking about the insanity of it and not actually i'm not actually advocating for anything i'm just observing it i'm just saying like hey man this is fucked up we're human does, isn't it fucked up? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, it's fucked up, but it's hilarious. You know, like, <laughs> like, and that's, that's the space that I get inspired by. Like, that's what I'm excited by, you know? That's, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I do also like to draw a lot. So, so I do, I like the things about perception and, and illusion that you can do with drawings. Right. Um, so Yeah you're listening to like narrative stuff. I'm probably listening to a little bit more uh, like things about humans killing each other because I want to see how that machine breaks, you know? It breaks. Well, I do, I do like crime, uh, crime as well, uh, crime yeah. podcast sometimes. Um, yeah. But, you know, I think, well, I think maybe, you know, you just get really excited and sometimes, you know, we don't think like, crime and conspiracy it just excited your brain sometimes as well that's yeah. the thing and then you can get as well a bit addictive to it in the in, in a way like like you get addictive to social media and stuff like that you know it's kind of yeah. and this is why sometimes you also get lost in um you know um uh, newspaper and stuff like that because they only sell you crazy story you never heard about positive story right that's yeah not, i mean yeah, it's been you can find it there's a lot of you shit. You can find it, but you know, if I if I open the you know the headline of the Guardian or something, you know, I'm I'm just gonna get what happened negative. Yeah, definitely. Won't. And maybe at the end of the you know the scrolling, I will get something positive, but mostly it's negative. You know. Yeah, the front page is mostly negative for sure. I'll agree oh. with you on that. <laughs> so I think I think it's important to stay aware of it. You know, like to be aware of it. Like you know, it's also easy to get into like so much negativity yeah but then at the same and i get that but then at the same time like it's like and it goes back to what you were saying about the the french complaining a lot the french complaining a lot is a good thing for waiters right that have good jobs (laughs) (laughs) you get what i'm saying like like uh like um you know the reason we don't have these things is because we're when people complain about their lives 
over here, you have a lot of people that are like, oh, they're just lazy, you know, people that want a handout, right? Whereas, like, in your culture, it's a lot more acceptable to sort of be like, oh, yeah, like, so it, it's crazy to me. Like, the, 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 whole, the, the whole idea of how, um, you know, like, like, right now, coal miners are, stri- are, are supporting Amazon workers, Right. Like <laughs> to, so that they can get a union so that they can strike for better working conditions, which is like yeah, crazy, well, crazy. To did, me. You, did you did you read that book about how to be more positive? Did you, you know, as a French woman, I read it because, you know, I, I felt like sometimes I was too negative. And it was really interesting because sometimes you just need to to look at the past uh, to realize that actually we're not, you know, there, there's, the, there's been huge progress made in the humanity you know yeah yeah like if you look at the conditions of people like 50 years ago or 60 years ago like it was much more worse than now if you look at the hair pollution like 60 years ago i think it was much more worse than now if you like look at the woman condition 60 years ago it was really bad you know not bad but you know most of the women stay home i had a lot of kids and they need to have any other choice. Like when well, now it has really changed. So, you know, I can find you a lot of, you know, things that are positive. Yeah, I just, and I agree with you. I'm just, I just think, and I know, and, and you kind of hinted that you think I'm a conspiracy theorist, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm like, is there a conspiracy <laughs> No, I mean, this is all, this is all like, this is all verifiable. That's the thing, that's the thing I was saying too. Like, sometimes I got it with, with, you know, American people. Like, you can be like very, like, you can be very positive. You get very excited, very uh-huh. uh, like easily in a positive way. Like, this is amazing. This is awesome, blah, blah, blah. But mm-hmm. you can really, when you get negative, excited, it's really bad as well, you know? Like, we well, it's intense. This. Well, I think that it comes from a place of like, uh, you know, like, yes, I'm not ne- definitely not doing anything about it other than making sure people know about it, right? Like, and I get, I get that it seems intense if you are from a, sta- a city that, uh, from a place where, like, you know, everything is, like, chill, you know, Germany's kind of chill, but it wasn't that long ago where they weren't that chill, right? Like... We're talking. Right, that's, I, what, that's what I'm talking about. You know, there's been like huge change in the positive way, and that's what that's, that is positive. You know, if you think about it, like, I and would it has say, to say that. I would say, okay, well, my take on on the the Second World War is, is going to be interesting to hear your reaction on because mm-hmm. <laughs> because I feel like it. Um, so, I th- I definitely think that the Nazis are horrible, horrible, horrible people. But if you listen to what like uh, Mussolini, who was uh, was more fascist, fascist, and not Nazi fascist, right? Until mm-hmm. after they got co opted, like what he says about what he's trying to do, and they were completely incompetent. They couldn't take over uh, Ethiopia, <laughs> right? They needed Germany to come help them. Like if you look at what they were saying, is that like they were just wanted an empire like England had. Right. Mm-hmm. And in the meantime that that is happening, England is um, is what's it called? Destroying uh, the, or I'm not in the meantime, but like in, in, in England had done some horrible things to India. Right. The, 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 we're still like sussing some of that out. People get very upset when you call uh, when you're calling to question Winston Churchill uh, for being a racist. Right. Mm-hmm. But like I would say as an American because we are doing so much of the damage, I feel mm-hmm. responsible to know about it and to talk about it, right? Like, I understand you're not responsible, so this is not your fight, but, like, the things that we're doing in Yemen, to, like, we're, we do horrible things in, all over the world, and, to, and, and you can, like, say, yeah, things are better in Germany, but they're not, I wouldn't say they're necessarily better. I don't, I don't know if things are better or, or not better. I'm just saying that, you know, you, I think it's just a way, you know, I think you need to be, I think it's good to be critic. And, and this is why I'm saying, but you have yeah. to find, I think the best thing, you have to be critic, but you have to be positive as well. You can't positive. just only be critic. 
It's oh, no, I think, it's not I gonna think, work. It's not gonna work. But I think what's positive is mutual aid. Like, here's how ridiculous things are over here. And and, and now I just feel like I'm trying to let you know, like that the that the illusion is real. The Navy just declared socialists a terrorist organization. Mm-hmm. It, it, socialists. Okay. A, a terrorist organization in, in in oh my screen my TV screen just went dead. Oh, there it is. Uh, they, they just declared socialism like terrorism, mm-hmm. and in this country there used to be a thing where you could not be put in prison without habeas corpus. Habeas corpus still exists elsewhere in the world, where you can't mm-hmm. be charged. You have to be proven. It's part of the Magna Carta, right? Like that happened in the UK. So what? What ends up happening over here is that we have um, this president who says, okay, we can, we can uh, imprison Muslims without habeas corpus because they're terrorists, right? Mm-hmm. Anybody that we declare a terrorist, we can now pr- imprison. And now with the whole thing that happened on, on January 6th, like they're mm-hmm. trying to get more people. They're, now, they're, now what they're fighting is, fighting is domestic terrorism. But including socialists in that means that anybody that's trying to help through means of mutual aid or advocating for socialism is now potentially able, you can arrest them for habeas Mm -hmm. corpus. That's what was happening during Black Lives Matter. During Black Lives Matter, and and I'm really sorry that this episode just became me explaining some of the horrible things that have been happening Mm -hmm. (laughs) to an outsider. I totally apologize. We can have you on to talk about something else. But it's like the 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 idea of positivity when like the um you know they were just taking people straight up off the streets. That's ice, right? Like Mm -hmm. and as a as a uh, my I'm Cuban, so my parents are uh, came from a communist uh, country. We're refugees, like. For me, the the idea, like, I have a lot of positive thoughts and positive experiences, but I think there's a myth there that I get a lot of inspiration from in terms of, like, it's like, no, we can make the world a better place, but, uh, but you know, we need to stop certain things. Like, we need to stop stop for profit prisons, right? Like those would be mm-hmm. things that I would think be, would be a positive thing. But um, I find that going back to like Americans are too positive. I think that Americans were too positive about Joe Biden because Joe Biden's mm-hmm. doing a lot of the same shit that, 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 that it, like nothing has changed. Right. And so well, he's been, he's been in the house for what, for since January. Yeah. Trump so. did a whole bunch of bad shit before that, like by now. So, <laughs> Let's see. Let's wait and see. I would say, you know, I think you know, that it's been what six months. Like uh, you, that's you know, you a very common. You can't really judge a president over six months. Like I would wait and see first. But I'm judging him over his entire career and the six months. Ah. Well, I, I don't have, you know, I didn't follow uh, Joe Biden's <laughs> career, and I, all I know is that the guy is there for six months. So I, you know, I won't judge. His presidency yet. You can't, you know, you can't really say. Yeah. Well, well we have more. Already died, you know? We have more proof of what kind of president Joe Biden is than we do of uh, of what tr- kind of uh, person in public office uh, Trump is. Right? Trump only served for four years. Biden's been uh, Biden uh, uh, put more black people in prison. Biden is for profit prisons. Like so, it, it it's like it's actually really really terrifying. Like mm-hmm. right now is the worst time because basically he's getting every like everybody's everybody that is bad in our government is getting that that wants to starve people kill people they're doing it and then they're going but we like gay people and i'm like and we love women but then like we're bombing women and we're bombing gay people and we're bombing trans people right so like Mm -hmm. you like i literally just saw something on tiktok where somebody was saying that um that like that we should be really excited because on a submarine in the Navy, somebody put, they put a bu- bu- bunch of books about like gay people and r- critical race theory and all of these things and, and how that was a big win. I'm like, it's still on a fucking killing machine. <laughs> well, um, it's another <laughs> subject. <laughs> anyway, you know, it's a really big subject, actually. Yeah, no, well, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to throw it on you. I just, it, it's just, it, it, uh, the idea of positivity was really hard for me, <laughs> and the dear, the idea of of uh, of of uh, of of positivity in like 
I do think I like I think you hit it on the head. I think Americans are too positive in that sense. And I feel like I I, I feel like uh we could I think that there is something valuable about French people like uh you know well, I think you, you you know it is valuable until it is too much. You know, you know what I mean. I think so this you know, is it's, too it's, much. Huh? This <laughs> I is think too you much? just have to find. I think if you're too too positive, it's not good. If you're too negative, it's not good. I think you need to find the right balance. You need to be critical when 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 it has to be, but you also need to you have to be able to step, take a step back and look at your situation. As for for me, in my perception. Of course, because I'm not in America. I don't know what's going on. But, yeah, yeah. If it, you know, sometimes if I'm too negative, I just need to take a step back and look what I have and just being like, okay, it's, you know, yeah, yeah. it's fine. You know, it's not that bad. <laughs> you know? Interesting. It's fine. You know, yeah. at the end of the day. <laughs> and for me, I'm like, hey, Europeans, please understand how bad it's going here and that you should fight us. My that's my that's my. No, we're not gonna fight you guys. No, no, you not know, in a war. Nobody should fight each other. <laughs> not no in a war, war. but you should no. fight. Like you should fight for your own health care because I think that w- one of the things that that uh, w- Americans want to do is change European healthcare systems because mm. why w- why leave all that money on the table? Well, I don't think that you know. I don't think that this will change anyway. This is pretty much. I mean, I don't wanna like. But you know, healthcare system is so normal, yeah. So you know, it's not. But they're already doing change. it in the UK. I did live in the UK. Um, I did get health insurance. I was, uh, it was no, like, but they're I, trying to take that away from you guys. In the UK, yeah. But in the UK, you know, they're not anymore in Europe. They left, you know. So, oh, okay, uh, okay. Fair I'm enough. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about Europe, yeah. <laughs> well, oh. they're where in Europe? You know, they're not anymore. So uh, I don't know what That's they're doing with Americans, guys, uh-huh. but, you know, I don't think you're, I think, you know, I think what's going to come next to Europe is actually in the European healthcare, where, because now the system in Europe is like, in France is different than in Germany, in Italy is different than in, in France, in it, uh, or different than in Spain. What could be something very good is just an in the healthcare for the whole Europe, it's like everybody gets in healthcare. So if I go to Italy, I just don't have to worry about changing my number or my card or see. But you know, I don't think. Yeah, maybe the UK. They yeah, they try. That's true. But yeah, you know, it's not Europe anymore. <laughs> yeah, I think that there is a global machine that comes from the US. That their incentive is to basically anything that can, you can make money off of, they want to take. And they don't care. They don't care if it's in Bolivia. They'll overthrow the government in Bolivia, so that they can get the the lithium for the new green energies. They don't care. And and I and so, um, I feel like. I feel a lot like, uh, and I do. I I'm definitely inspired by all this stuff because I feel like. Um, I feel like outrage is like you know not every good emotion like you were saying not every good emotion is like. It, it, uh, is is as valuable like or not every bad emotion is a bad thing right and outrage and anger is such a powerful motivator right like I I I I would say that like like for example we just had a, a crazy one last year where a black man got murdered and everybody was mm-hmm. outraged and people started going out to the streets right like so I I think I think this is an interesting conversation. I don't I I I and I and I value your perspective on it. I'm more than anything fascinated and shocked by how uh how this is not something people know about outside of the country. Like that's that's more than anything like what what my motivation for this conversation. Yeah, but as you said it, you know, America is not the center of the world like, you know, you said it at the beginning like like how you you said, oh, everybody um, uh, think America is, but we, and that's no, why I'm pleading don't. We don't with know you everything guys. about America. We just know movies. <laughs> and that's why I'm pleading with you guys: become aware of how bad it is here. It is not great. Like we, they are, they are hurting us. They, we didn't get the same uh, protections that you guys did. You know, like you guys got money. You guys got to keep your jobs because your jobs got paid by the government. So that like everybody lost their fucking jobs. And we didn't have health insurance. Like, it, you know, like, it, I definitely think, like, France, be happy with what you have because <laughs> we don't have well, it. As here. a French person, I have to say it. I'm, you know, I'm happy with, with what I have. I have yes. I'm and jealous you know, of what you have. <laughs> 
it's great, you know. <laughs> it is. It's amazing. You can get sick and you don't go bankrupt. It's it's insane. Yeah. Of what? Well, it's it's not insane. It's normal. It should be normal everywhere. I would love it to be normal. <laughs> There's a cultural and gap here. And I hope here. you will one day. And I hope you will. And I'm sure you will. You know. I hope so too. It it's been be. a very long fight. We've been doing it for pretty much our entire lives. And we gave it to other countries before giving it to ourselves. Like we gave it to Germany. We gave it to France. We rebuilt all those countries and gave them healthcare. Mm -hmm. And we won't give it mm -hmm. to ourselves. Like I think that one of the things that a lot of people here in this country gets get, get caught up on is like, racial politics within the country within the borders but then they don't give a fuck that we're bombing brown and black people everywhere else right so anyway i'm definitely passionate and inspired by this so i'm sorry to lay it on I'm you glad I find, I, you find inspiration because <laughs> that was my subject <laughs> <laughs> but it's but and it's and and i totally appreciate you calling me a conspiracy theorist i don't think you're wrong i think that's totally valid be careful think, with that. be careful <laughs> no, I'm just, I just, I, 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 you know, it's I a cliche is... as well that we have about American people. You, you, you guys love conspiracy as well. <laughs> it's a bit of a cliche. I'm sorry. That's why yeah. I'm just like. But when I was growing up, the cliche was that you would go and you would, you, as a, as an American, you would go to Europe and then people would be like, there's actually a comedian that has a joke about it. And it's like from the early two thousands, right? During the, the Iraq war, like, people would tell us about our own politics. They would be like, oh, well, you know, the CIA overthrew this, this, and this in some place, right? So, like, I don't know. I think that... You know, I, I just think that this is, has a lot to do as well with uh, social media and the internet. It brings a lot of conspiration into people because there's so, many, so much information and sometimes there's no... You know, you should check your your background and what, what your sources are very important. So, And I think that's why there's so many people at the moment who are, like, getting into conspiracy theories and stuff like this you know because yeah, yeah. i love it information I, and there's a lot of lie as well i love it i love it i love that this is where the conversation ends this is so perfect thank you so much thank you for thank tolerating you. me thanks to you i have to go unfortunately i have an hour no no class. i'm wrapping it up i'm wrapping it up uh so thank you so much i really appreciate you uh and i appreciate that you think i'm crazy <laughs> <laughs> and i think it makes for a great podcast episode i don't i don't i i don't think that you're wrong i probably am a little crazy but <laughs> we all are a bit crazy we all are a bit crazy I don't know. Everybody but i appreciate crazy. you humoring me have a lovely day what, uh, can we promote your stuff uh oh, it, What's uh? What's you, you? So you're uh? At, what's your uh, at on Instagram? Uh, at Pilarius. So at P E L A R R E U S. Uh huh. <laughs> Voila, so you can check my uh, Instagram. And then uh, and then you. I'm waiting uh, for website. you all conspiracy people <laughs> to follow me now. <laughs> oh no! Everybody's you're gonna think you're right because nobody that listens to me believes me. But <laughs> but I promise <laughs> this is all documented. And anyway, have a lovely day uh, 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 and uh, and um, or evening. And uh, mm -hmm. thank you so much for being on the show. I hope uh, you will speak to me again someday because sure. I'm not you so sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. But this uh, well, is hilarious. Send me your sources and then maybe I will talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish you a nice day and keep, keep going your podcast. And, oh, thank you so uh, yeah. much. And wait, you be also have... Uh, be positive. You have a you have a podcast called Meet the Creatives, right? Yeah. Uh, well, yes, I do. It's only on Instagram, actually. It's, it's only Instagram like a Live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on on, on the IGTV, and uh, but I stopped it for the summer, and then maybe I start again in September. Cool. All right. You have a lovely day. Bye. Okay. Have a nice day too. Bye. Bye. <laughs>